the person standing on my right, who is the person <laughs> we'll be talking to today, is Africa's number one. He's Mamelodi Sundown's number one goalkeeper, Uganda Crane's number one goalkeeper, the captain of the Uganda Cranes, but also South Africa's best goalkeeper for the season 2015-2016. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's Extra Time with Gistin. My name is Gistin. Let's do this. I'm all right, how are you? Welcome to Extra Time. Welcome to my place as well. <laughs> it's a mission. No, I like missions. I don't like easy stuff. So yes, I make it difficult for everyone or anyone to get to So that's me. intentional, right? Yeah, it's, I'm like money. <laughs> no one, money doesn't come to you. You must go to money and money makes... I, I need to tell people, I think I left my home at 8. My crew left their homes at 8. The warden is not to say that I'm going to go Mukaga chitun dukat. Na yeye the thing is that ne jam we kam paro inzo gamba buli omali na mu moroka. What happened? Inzo buli wen furu mawa ano. No, that's another problem. Na yenga it's okay. But finally we are here. That's definitely, definitely. Hundred percent. How is work? Work is challenging, but I can't complain. It's always good. Okay. Mm. Is this now like your period of a, a, a little break or something? What's, what's this? Uh, you, because you're, you're rarely here. Yes, uh, it's, it's like a break. I was given a few days off, mm. but uh, I also love staying in Kampala for a couple of, because we're going into winter in South Africa. So I like the heat in Kampala. So uh, let me absorb the heat so that when I go back, I'm still warm. You have some heat within, <laughs> you, within you. So mm -hmm. let's roll back a bit. Precisely, if someone said, who is Dennis, where were you born? You know, the, the, the brief preamble. Uh, Dennis <laughs> is, a, is a goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. He's a goalkeeper for Uganda Cranes and Mamelodi Sundowns in South Africa. Born and raised in Insambia. Where there is that famous hotel now. Yeah. We call Mestil, it Mestil, right? Mestil, Mestil, yeah. yeah. Hey, they, they were railway quarters. Because mm. uh, my dad used to work in railways, so. That's where I grew up. I was born in Zambia Hospital, and uh, that's me. Four, we're four in the family. And how many boys? Two boys, two girls. Your kid number what? Three. Second last. Second last. Not stubborn. That's close to last. Mwate mwawo kana nyu? Auntie, whoever is second also, he can be second from the top or from the bottom, so. No, but second last from... I want to. See. Is it from bottom from top? <laughs> from bottom. Ah, it had to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's. I love it. Does it's it come in once in a while? Because you're you're more like a last born. No, hey, if you see the last born is a girl. Eh, eche jo empaka kuwa na mtu. Second last kwa. Katini kuwaanga. You have to give her space also to enjoy her last past. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. yeah, it's okay. Mm. So let's quick forward off to school. I want to rush you to sports mm -hmm. because we want to get over that so quickly and then get back to your life. I mean, extra time is more about your life beyond the game. Uh, all the time we see you on TV, a lot of people are discussing Dennis and Nyango, your statistics and all that. Now we mm. want to focus off that because like we say, we think you sports personality is your life beyond the game or off the pitch influences a very good percentage of what you bring on the pitch. Yes. So what's your life like off the pitch? Uh, I like interacting with people, friends, to hear what they feel about life in general. Because when we're playing football, we miss a lot of stuff. Mm. We believe that we are in a space where we can't listen or no one can tell us anything. We call ourselves celebrities. But uh, beyond that, we are human. So I, I love keeping my friendship going with my guys and uh, to know how they feel about life in general. Because we learn from each other. I tell them about football life and mm. I also get my life together because it's not only about football. Uh, at the end of the day, I have to also have responsibilities as a person and also to, to look after my family because family comes first, then football comes second. Tell me about your family. How many boys do you have? Four boys. It's a full house. Are you done? In life, you'll never <laughs> say I'm done. Eh? I, I mean, as long as I'm still alive, I might look for a girl. It is a gang, but I love my gang because it keeps me going. It keeps the momentum and the happiness. If you find us together, it's... Your wife must be struggling. 
she, to keep the house in, in order. <laughs> she doesn't. When she speaks, they all listen oh, because true. she's the queen of the house. Oh, yeah. So when I'm there, it's, a, it's chaotic. When I'm there, because <laughs> when I'm there, it's PlayStation. Let's go here. Let's go here. When she's there, it's the house is in order. <laughs> yes, Kubanga. She, she, she's the queen of the house, so we, we must respect, and uh, she does that very well. How long have you been in football? All my life. Because I was playing football at, at a very young age. Let's talk about the professional football. How many years did you Professional play? football, it's from, tw from 2005. It's about That's it's way about back. 16 years? Yes. Do you have a life of football? <laughs> yes, I do. What is it like? Because when you talk about Dennis, we talk, we think football loves. You like, okay, uh, really have a life. I do have a life, but I, I like having my privacy and I, I hide. I keep myself to to my house. When I'm in Kampala, I'm, I'm home. I go out a little bit with my guys. We we chill, have lunch, and. See Kampala, see the border border guys fighting us on the road. That's, that's my passion. And, and also, <laughs> I go out. Uh, in Kampala, I don't go out because I don't get that time. I'm, 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 my time in Kampala is limited. But when I'm in South Africa and I'm off like a week, if I was in South Africa now, I would be on a holiday somewhere outside Johannesburg. Because my kids, when I'm playing football, they, they miss me. I play football every two, three days. I'm, I'm playing a game, so like a day before the game, I'm in camp. So I might be at home twice a week. At, at what point did you feel like you wanted to take football very seriously? Uh, the moment school started giving me bursaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, because where, where we grew up, it was like a ghetto. It was like, you know, when you're playing football as your passion, uh, so for me, I, I wanted to be that famous person and being talked about. I, I didn't know it would turn out to be a profession and to earn a living from it, but uh, unfortunately it turned out. Or fortunately it turned out. So the moment uh, I realized that football can pay my school fees and take me to the next level, I, I, I picked interest and people liked what I was doing. So I kept going and... When, when I was in senior six, actually in senior five and senior six, football paid my, my school fees. Uh, well, from also O level and primary school, I was, it was football. So I, I decided to give back to football by playing football. And you know, you talk about when you were young and you wanted to be this famous person. How does it feel when you look back at it and then you know you're famous, really? <laughs> It's amazing and it drives me to also inspire, inspire youngsters because I was also inspired by someone who used to play football uh, for KCCA and Uganda Cranes who was Sadiq Wasa because we never had TV by then and you, you would listen on radio, they say Sadiq Wasa was a great play goalkeeper doing this for Uganda. So I was like, okay, let me try and be that. And uh, I'm, I hope I also inspire youngsters who now they watch us on TV who would say, I want to be like that guy one day, or better, because I cannot be the last number. There must be another number ahead of me. So uh, I'm proud. I try to do what I can by meeting youngsters, telling them, because, you know, football, we, we tend to forget that uh, we, we, we are also human and we need to, to nurture our young boys. So the moment we are on the field, we think we own the world, and it's not like that. You you must also look at a, another picture of of being a human being, and uh, that's why I try to tell the boys that besides football, you are a human being, and there's life after football. So you must know how to behave. You must look after yourself. You must you must be a role model, because if I'm in the nightclub every day, and the parent sees his his son, talking about Dennis then young, and he's gonna be like, this Let guy is always. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I need to to paint a better picture of. <laughs> yeah, no, I do go, and I can't deny it that I don't go. But I can't go every week. Yes. I mean, then I'm not a footballer. I'm a musician. No, I'm a, I'm a, a, a DJ or a night rider, and I don't want to be in that space. So I try so and when keep. You talk about inspiring. The other day when you guys were playing, 
your game against um, mm-hmm. no, Burkina Faso. Yeah, Burkina Faso. Mm. I think there was a group of little ones who gave gloves. Yes, yes. And it was all over, and I saw their father celebrating. <laughs> think, okay, it's, it's this serious, you know? A pair of gloves from Dennis Nyango means pretty much the world to these kids. Well, I love such moments because as I walked out of the tunnel to go for warm up, I had kids scream and they're like, Dennis, 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 hi. So I looked back and there were just three kids. I was like, wow, this is amazing because we are in the COVID times and, and having kids in, at the stadium means a lot and they're screaming your name. So for me to appreciate them, that's all I had to do because I didn't know them. I even asked whose kids are these and eventually I got to know that they are for one of the big guys in town. Yeah, so I, I was happy to give to them because probably it can inspire them or it, it can be a memory for them being at St. Mary's watching Dennis Onyango playing against Burkina Faso. This is what Talk it me can. about you, the things you do beyond the game, be, about your life, you know, if it's friends, if it's family. Do all those people understand how demanding your career is? Well, yeah, because uh, the first thing that my manager told my wife is that you must understand that Dennis is a footballer and he's going to be busy, he's going to be in the limelight, he's going to be he's going to be looked at by almost everyone because in South Africa football is, is a big deal. Yeah. When you go to the mall, you find supporters, they want you to take pictures with them and I meet ladies, they want to hug and, and, and they, people around me must understand the, the life I'm living in and uh, my friends, and, uh, unfortunately most of my friends are footballers or former footballers. I do also have foot musicians who are my friends but they understand that football is my career and I must take it. Because now you talked about your manager talking to your wife, mm-hmm. um, a wife or a whatever woman in that sense is in a footballer's life, mm. it's very important for them to understand how demanding that career is. Your manager talked to your wife. I, I, I want to assume not all players are managers, not so? Yes, yes, they do. And there are those who think, because it's automatic, the wives should automatically understand, you know? And when your wife doesn't understand your career, then clearly it's about to Yeah, well then it's not going to work out properly because footballers, we, we play... Like I might travel from, I'll give you an example of, of Uganda. We play from in, in Arua. Mm. We play on the Paraka. And we're going to drive back. It's, it's seven or eight hours drive. And I'm going to arrive at home at either 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. Then your mind is going to tell you, this guy, where is he coming from? Is he coming from someone else's house or what? So the moment you, you don't understand the logistics of football and the footballer, because at home, I also, they sit and watch football with me. You know us, we, we shall say, I think this journey should have taken four hours. Exactly, you start. Where were, <laughs> <laughs> where were you? They don't look at, I had a stop over here, yeah. I, I had the puncture, okay. You we have food three times, you should have bought once. Exactly, so, but uh, for me, I'm fortunate that uh, my people understand me very well. And uh, when I'm tired, I'm tired. When I'm watching football, they sit and watch with me. Even if they don't understand football and it's none of their business, but it's their business to understand the life I'm in and moving forward. Because if, if, if we don't get... Because they have to be on the same line with you. We must be on the same page. And when I have time, I must make time for them because it's my obligation to make time. And, uh, but you know, you see, like your wife, I think it was an initiative to help her understand your career. Exactly. You sit back and say automatically she has to understand. Now yeah, yeah. Important. Yeah, it, it was my role and it was my manager's role because uh, we got married when she was very young. I was young as well and you know when you are a very young man, you are energetic, you want to be yeah, everywhere. Uh, so <laughs> my manager had to sit us down and explain to us how it's going to be. Otherwise, if my mind is not focused from the house to the game, I'm not going to perform. So it's very important that we both understand what's happening in which space we are in because we drive fancy cars and, and, and forget that uh, we need to look after other people. And uh, for me, I'm fortunate that I got someone who understands. Of course, it's not easy because like now, I've been away from home for two weeks. And when I arrive, the next day I'm going in camp. I have a game on, on, on Tuesday, and then I have a game on Friday. So they also miss my presence, yeah. 
and it can never only end on the phone, video call and all that. Uh, the kids need to see me, the kids need to spend time with me. They play football, I must be there to support them when they are playing football because, okay, I did not have the same when I was growing up because my dad was also a busy guy. He was traveling on, on, on that train because from here to Kasese, you only see him <laughs> once and, and it didn't bother me because he was the one guy who could beat us for playing football. So I was actually happy when so he was... What was that when you said, I have accepted? The moment I started paying for my school fees. So then he said... He was like... I can't pay your fees, cutting yeah, from it's <laughs> so he gave up, he didn't give up on me, but he gave me that freedom to choose what I wanted. And he actually started coming to the stadiums to watch me in the corridors so, to, so that he, he gets to know is this guy still really playing football or is he just playing around because you know when by that time when you play football or boxing you are moya you, you talked about your kids being a part of sports do you have no goalkeeper now definitely i have my second is is is, is my junior my younger junior and <laughs> fortunately is the is the third born he loves he loves goalkeeping he loves, he loves, he's, he's, he's not afraid because in, in, in goalkeeping you must be brave mm. and he's brave, I love him. You, you know what worries me about your position? Mm. You have no chance for a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, us, us goalkeepers, we are like the pilots. One mistake, boom. But uh, such is life. You, you, you must be careful in whatever you do. So I'm used, mistakes come through, but these, these are lessons we learn throughout the game and you learn, you grow as a person. And I, I, I still make mistakes, yeah. even though I've been playing football for a very long time, but I still make mistakes and uh, I move on. But I know how to deal with such mistakes and how to deal because now there's social media, oof. <laughs> there's a lot, they say, everyone becomes a coach, everyone becomes uh, an expert, but what can you do? Everyone has the right to use his phone. So. I have to move on as, as quick as possible and get to the next game and rectify and, and, and life goes on. Talk to me about football in, 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 in South Africa, especially the, the fans feet. Balinga wa falawan. But Yakuba Bawa no simany nyo cheva jira. When you lose a game or when you make a mistake, how do they react? <laughs> of course it's not easy. It's it's very difficult. All 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 soccer fans are the same. Soccer fans are the same, taxi drivers are the same here and in <laughs> South Africa. Everything, I mean, we're living in a, in a small world that things are the same. So th they do react, they tell you how you should sit outside, someone must be given a chance to play, how you are useless, how you are selling the games, and, and we must deal with all those things because... Do you know, when you're the pitch, has someone ever screamed, no, Kukuma no Muria? I don't actually pay attention to supporters. I don't because then I'm, I'm not focused. Because uh, you're playing, you're playing and everyone all of a sudden is, a, is an expert, is a coach at that point. Mm. And in my head I keep thinking, if I was on the pitch, I think I would tell some of them just to... No, you can't. I mean, uh, because when we play, there's a lot of people. So the, you won't hear them. All you hear is the noise and... But after the game, now when you... Because our tunnel is next to the supporters. <laughs> Then if you have lost, now you hear the small gossip. Yeah, yeah. this one, that, they Mama start. Marie. Yeah, because he cannot insult you in front of his other friends because you will find some who love me, some, because not everyone will love me. have that bit of, of, of guilt of, I can't abuse him in front of friends. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I will tell you one thing. We have one problem in Uganda is that Soccer fans do not have respect for footballers. They don't, they believe footballers are just there as you can say whatever you want to them. And forgetting that we also have feelings. They, because there's, there's, there's betting now which is helping some guys earn money. And, and if I make a mistake and someone loses his money, of course he's going to be mad at me. But let them learn more about the game because football is all about making mistakes. It's like life. In life, if you don't make mistakes, you're not going to learn. So, unfortunately, when, when I go to, let's say, Owino and I sit there with them and they think I'm like them, then there's no respect. But the moment supporters learn that playing football or, or singing or any talent is special, 
because if if you can if I can do it and you can't do it, then you must respect me. It's like going to TV. I can't do the same. I must respect your profession. You must respect my profession, and we move on. Okay, you get angry, I get angry, and life goes on. But uh, in Uganda, uh, they they don't feel us. I would say they don't feel us. They but feel what, like. What do you mean? With, what do you mean they don't feel you? Because when when Uganda friends is play. Like, mm. Yeah, which is good and and we cannot only like the the positive we also we must also be able yeah, to take yeah, the yeah. negativity and the criticism but you must also have respect you cannot drag even, when, even in tough times the respect should be there yes the respect must be there you can criticize but do not insult me yeah. because i did not mean to do it but the game calls for such mistakes and uh, we must move on you know i i, I kept telling people i don't know why the fans think if if um if a player makes a mistake Somehow we always react so badly that more like we feel so angry than the player who made the mistake. Come on, he made that mistake. He must be so angry with himself. What makes you think he should throw it in that face? They're already angry with themselves. Yeah, well, they are, they are fans and you must also give them that space because they come to the game expecting the team to win. And uh, that's probably their happiness when the team wins and you're doing well. But they also have to understand that it's a game of mistakes. You can't win without the other team making mistakes, and that happens also vice versa. So, uh, football is a game of emotions. But again, I think when we see you on the pitch, because as a footballist, just like how I w you, you also have bad days, right? Definitely. Just like how I wake up and go to office. Ngale, you know, because I mean, you woke up at 8, you got here at half past 12. So it's you know, Half day is gone. Day, you know? But I, I, it would hurt me most if like my bosses don't seem to understand. Because sometimes if I have a bad day, there are things that are causing a bad day, probably at home or mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I would prefer a boss who is a bit mature enough to say, okay, you're doing terribly today. Something seems to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Compared to a boss who's just going to come and say, I don't know what's wrong with you. You're not doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the things that fans need to understand that few people have a life. There are many things that could cause you a bad day. Na efe, goja na ogudia. We assume, usaze ogudia. Forget about everything else. Mm. And, and that's what we keep telling them. These, these guys have families. They have all this life, you know, beyond this game. So it's better to, to take them as human beings. But agudia probably Yeah, it's, it's uh, as I said, it's, football is a game of emotions. And, and people do not understand that sometimes you also have a bad day. I might be the best, but I will have a bad day at one stage, or I might have a bad week, completely a yeah. bad week, but we, we don't also get time to interact with the supporters. Mm. It's also important to interact with the supporters. They get to know your feelings about them and your feeling about the game, because at the end of the day, we, 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 we need each other. As much as I need them to come to the stadium because they pay for the, for, for the tickets and it's their money by the jerseys, they must also feel for me because I'm a, I have a name to protect, a reputation, I, and it's my work, by the way. I must do it properly. If I don't do it very well, they might as well get someone it's else. More sense than young. Extra time is here. That's why we keep telling them. But I don't know my name. I want to get them. Tell them that you are going to get them. You are going to get them. So, I don't know how many people are going to get them. I don't know how many people are going to get them. Tompa Mopi, Rakubanga, we can't we can't tell the future, we can't tell what's coming next. Yeah. Uh, I might play knowing that I'm gonna do well, but then I make a mistake in the in the in the process. So it's very difficult. But, but a mistake is a mistake. It just happens. You can't explain it, it just happens. You can't. It's like having an accident on the road. I mean you are not out there to make an accident. But it happens. So uh well uh, I'm fortunate that I've not done so many mistakes, but I've done a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I feel the pain, I feel the, the comments, they abuse me, they call me anything, but football is not a game of soft-hearted people. You how, must. How does it feel, Okmanti? Today when you make a mistake, they call you whatever they want to call you. Tomorrow when you're a hero, Exactly. <laughs> it is funny, but it's, hence it's life. Because you're not going to be a hero every day. You can't. If Jesus was betrayed, who are you? you know, we, we must give relevant examples to people or to, 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 to things that you see. 
everyone, there's those who say, ah, okay, there's God, but I also want also this side of Satan. So, I mean, you can't have it all. So, you must have the criticism and the nice days and you move on. That's how life is. If, if, if someone asks you to describe yourself, how would you describe yourself? Um, but I, I like, because I must, I must tell you, that's how I was raised. You must be humble, you must be respectful to everyone. Okay, I lose it also sometimes. I lose it and say whatever I want. But at the end of the day, when I feel like I'm wrong, I must come and apologize. But if you don't want my apology, then we move on because you don't want it. I like the humble part of, of, of life because it's very, very important. When you're angry, how do you react? Oof. And, but it's amazing. I've never fought in my life. Like phys going physical? Physical, never. Never, ever, ever. In the Nakula, I am afraid to fight because what if I punch you and you die? Exactly, then I don't want to regret after. I shouldn't have done that. I should have done, moved away. And when I'm angry at something, I move away. That's me. If I'm angry with you on the phone, hang up. I hang up and I block you. That's me. Because I don't want to say the next bad thing. And, then you have to and now I must say sorry. I have a few sorries. I don't have a lot of sorries. My sorries are very few. You reserve them. I reserve Remember, them. I, I look after <laughs> them very well. So if I don't want to say sorry to you, I'm going to block you. I block you everywhere. If it's physical, you walk away. If it's physical, I, I walk away. Even if I'm at home, if I'm angry with my wife, I, I get my car keys, I drive off. If it's a, if it's a situation, let's say like a friendship, first put it on hold? I put it on hold and uh, when you come back to your senses, you who's angry at me, then we talk. And I don't hold grudges. We, 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 we sort out our issues there and then and we move on, even if you've backstabbed me a million times. Because we are not the same. In life we are not the same. There are people who only like being in fights. And he feels happy. If I don't pick up a fight here, I'm not happy. So you must also create space for such people. And me, they say, ah, that one is a coward. But OK, I'm a coward. They live long, and when there's tear gas out there and I'm at home, they say he's a coward. But I'm safe, I'm <laughs> home. So <laughs> I love that. So I, it's, 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 it's a difficult situation. But if, if you look at me, I will tell you this. My sisters are very aggressive. More than us, the boys. Probably they took our anger yeah, and they, they, and they, they took their yeah. Because when my sister says something, she means it, and she's not going to change her mind. But I will look at it and say, okay, maybe if if I was supposed to give you a million shilling, and I have it, and you have a problem and we have issues, me and you, I will say, okay, let me give you half. On the side, I won't even tell my sisters, but <laughs> I'll do it on the side and say, but don't tell her. You see, that's that's me. So I love. I, I might even give my last penny to someone and I stay because I know I'm going to get it again. And people have taken advantage of that, right? They do, but sometimes when I get to know that you're taking advantage of me, I block you. That's my <laughs> weapon. I block you completely because now it happened once, twice, three times, four times. You're using the same trick. Then, then you're abusing me. Then now you, you, you are disrespectful. And when you're happy, how are you? Like this. <laughs> like I'm always, my teeth, is, <laughs> my teeth are always out. I'm always laughing. If you see my friends, they're all happy souls. Okay, they have their own issues. When they're angry, they're angry. But when we are together, they are, we love happening. We hap happy. Yeah, and they're not people who go out drinking. <coughs> one, okay, one, one drinks, and that's him. But the rest... They, they are happy because they are happy to be with me. Just meet, talk, meet, right? talk, laugh, have some that meat around, eat. Yeah, that's all. We talk about football, no more, everything. And because we learn from each other. If I don't talk to you, I'm not going to learn anything. But that's, that, those are the friends I have. Because, you know, you know, like you said, you said when you're happy. And then I was just thinking, when you Google his pictures, is that, is that, um, is that, Signature smile of Denis <laughs> Signature smile. I called it that. <laughs> that's, that's me. That's because there's people who know Denis Onyango, the footballer, yeah. who is 
playing football and they say, that guy, I don't think he even smiles or laughs, but there's the Dennis that's off the field. It's different, totally different. I do things at the club, they even ask themselves, are you really a father, you? Yeah, because... Dennis, again, when you're on the pitch, you have a different personality. Mm. But you know someone who's very critical could look through the personality, and when you look through critically, I for one, you feel, you look like the kind who, on the pitch, are very serious. But when you sit like in a bus to travel back, you know people who don't make many jokes, and they make one. <laughs> and the whole bus laughs. <laughs> <laughs> so you could turn and say, okay, who, who says that? Because if one is laughing, he's not even laughing, and they will say it's Dennis. But he's not laughing too. Mm, I don't mix my football life with my normal life. Totally different. Totally different, because that's work. If you're reading news on TV, I've never seen any uh, news, how do you call them, anchors or? Anchors, yes. I've never seen them laughing. Do you? On TV when they're reading news, do they? Not many. You won't find a lot. You might find one there, those footballers who play oh, with like a smile. On TV, I, I've seen one. Exa you see, all your life. That's me. On the pitch, um, it's a job, work. We might be friends, staying in the same house, make jokes. When we go on the field, I don't know you. We are working. So that then is, I, I take my job very serious and I take my life with happiness. If, if, if people get to understand that your career is not your life, then we'll move forward properly and without issues. Because I also see musicians who want to live the music life and the music life. You can't have the same. You must have a music life and a family life, so. Like I said, we've seen very many analysts say, you guys, your life off the pitch, you know, determines quite something on what you bring on the pitch. If you are to talk about the things that people do off the pitch, people in your career, mm. that affect what they finally bring on the pitch. Because we've seen people who, when they're starting out, you keep hearing saying, oh, that guy is good, that guy is good. But somehow, career enabled it out. Mm. And you know these fans, sometimes uh -huh. they know things, not many people know. Because it's possible in the Congo there are Dennis and there is your neighbor who is he's a football fan. Uh, if you come back drunk late like night, I'll pull up. So sometimes by my was a view. Hey, <laughs> so let's talk about some of those things mm. that are killing that are killing careers. not on the pitch. Well, it's it's unfortunate in in Uganda we do not have probably we have but they don't consult with them. Uh, people who come and speak to footballers about life skill uh, life after football, how you behave with people or on the pitch, with supporters and all that. Because we must also know how to deal with the media. Yes. Because I cannot just come and give you a story without knowing that it's going to backfire. backfire or affect someone else. Yeah. So for our, our footballers are playing football just to play football and they want the limelight and that's it. But I was fortunate into when I went to South Africa, uh, Super Sport, it was where Waiswa is playing. It's a very, very good club. They even brought people to talk to me or to talk to footballers about life skills. It's very, very important. I might be drinking and it's okay. Yes. But where and how much do you drink? And where do you sit when you're drinking? I go to nightclubs, I cannot deny it. Okay, in South Africa, I don't go to nightclubs because I'm, I'm busy, I'm 100%. But when I'm here, I can go to a nightclub once in a while. I might be in Kampala for two weeks and go to a nightclub once. But uh, how do you behave in the nightclub? Do you want everyone to know that you're around because you're big, you're a footballer? No, I don't want that. I want to go have fun like any other person and go home. I must know when to go to, to Owino. What am I doing there? I love going to such places because it gives me flashbacks. This is the life I grew up in, and it motivates me. It inspires me to work harder so that I don't go back to the same life. But what do you do when you go there? Do you go there and start 
sitting down and drinking with the same people that support you, they're not going to respect you. And that's the disrespect we get from, from, from the, the fans because now I'm sitting, I'm drinking with him. He's not going to respect me or he's buying me, which is good. He's buying me a drink because they love doing that. He's going to buy me a drink, and, but am I going to go all the time? No, I'm going to lose respect. And going back to, 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 to looking at footballers playing one, two years and say, wow, he was, he was good, but he couldn't go as far as he could. It's because footballers, they, they, they change their lifestyle. I'm a footballer to, to, to Uganda Cranes or KCC or Sports Club Villa, but I want to live a life of a hip hop star or a, a musician. I want to live like a baby cool, like Eddie Kenzo and them. They are my friends, but I cannot do what they do. When they go to the nightclub, that's where they make their money. And why should I go and, 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 and do the same? If he wants to meet me, let's meet for lunch. Let's talk life, life in music, life in football. Come to my house, I come to your house. But going to the nightclub, no. And you know, when you talk about people who, who are supposed to talk to these footballers about this other life, it makes a lot of sense because you keep hearing stories. They will tell you, ah, ah, you are going to put up training. You know, they, they sound like small things, mm. but in the end, our whole career is gone. Yeah, we have footballers who are reckless with their lives. They are playing for, for fun. But they are forgetting this is a career and you, you left probably school to come and play football because you sacrificed school to, because we all earn, we're all looking for earning. Yeah. But if I'm earning from football, I must respect football. If you pay me today, I don't show up for the next two weeks, then I'm disrespecting uh, the, the game. Then why should I pay you again? Because then I, when I pay you again, you're going to disappear. So the moment people realize that Football is a career and it's not a hobby because we grew up saying ah, football is leisure or sport is leisure. The moment we change that, that sport is not leisure, football is the biggest sport in the world. Even when Uganda Cranes is playing, I mean, President Museven will switch on his TV and say, oh, let me watch this. I don't know whether he watches, but uh, <laughs> if there's a World Cup, there's a World Cup, the whole world is watching. It doesn't, I see women watching football and she doesn't even know football, whether they score this side or this guy, but they are watching. They are like, they are wow, yeah, they're wearing the jerseys and uh, now they say they look sexy in the jerseys and all that. But that's football <laughs> for you. In boxing, there are no jerseys. They box with their chests out. But football is different. So the mindset of people changing leisure and professional job will give us the opportunity to, to, to have better infrastructures, better footballers, and going further and further. But the moment we are still having people with the leisure mind in their head, that we go there, sweat a little bit, play on the grass, stretching, sleeping on the grass, then we are not achieving anything and we are not helping the future because we can't all work in the offices. Yeah, yeah, sure. We can't all be presidents, we can't all be MPs. Someone must entertain the other person and someone must think for me in the bank do you involve your, your family in your football decisions? If you're <coughs> going to switch, let's say, that's pretty much one of the biggest decisions you guys make. Let's say to switch from a club to another. Um, I involve them big time because, you see, when, when, when I move from one club to another club, which means I'm also moving the family. Mm -hmm. Kids are going to the school, I must switch schools as well. They, they have friends because it, it, football is not only about me. Yeah. It's also about them because when I don't do well in football or in a game, they have friends there at school. They say that your dad is a goalkeeper. So when he makes a mistake or he doesn't do well, they're going to mock him and say, your dad was this and that. And I expect that because it's, it's normal in life yeah. than their kids. So I need to protect them. I must protect the family, I must protect myself. But before I make a decision, I sit, I say, we're going, because uh, my club is in Pretoria, mm. but I stay in Johannesburg. If I'm moving to Cape Town, I must also think about them. How long am I going to be staying in Cape Town? Will I last it, uh, at that club? What schools will they go 
what schools you must apply a year before, before because for schools, international schools, you must apply a year before because they don't have time to bring kids every day. Yeah, yeah. The class must have 20 kids and it's 20. They don't put 21. So I must look at all those logistics around. Am I going to get a house there that's going to accommodate them? Are they going to be happy? Because if they're not happy, I'm not happy. I'm not going to perform. So I involve them big time. Do they ever come back home and say, Daddy, this one said this? <laughs> when kids are telling them stories <laughs> about their dad's performance. They, no, they don't, but my little one is, is, is a problem. He's, he speaks about <laughs> everything. He speaks, he tells you, why are you coming home late? Why are you not here? <laughs> why? He's got a lot of whys with him, but I understand and accommodate it because he's young. He needs to learn. He needs to know why is this, why is that. And uh, in terms of football, they don't ask me because they're playing football as well. Okay, the older one doesn't play football. He's, he's, he's into music. He's, he's, he's into music. It's an entertainment house. He's into music. So all the gadgets, this, if I need something on the iPhone, he's going to tell me, you need to do this and this, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm happy. You know, I'm happy. I don't tell him, but I'm happy on the inside because I know which direction he's taking. And I must also make friends who will help him in his career of, of if he picks up music to go forward, I must get him people who will help him and become better and tell him if you do this. And I told him straight, the moment you go into probably let's say drugs or all those nonsense things and you go into prison, that's your life. You've chosen that and me, I, I would feel sad that you're in prison, but I wouldn't want to come and cry with you in prison. So he knows that uh, there's things I don't like and he must look after himself. But like you said, you see, you're very close to your family. There could be things that are happening in there and you have a gap, you know. Uh, God forbid, one of the boys is sick. Mm. But you have to go and show up for the game. How do you shake off all these other things that are happening in your life and still show up on the pitch and perform as expected? Well, what do you do <laughs> to shake it off and then get there and do what you're supposed to do? I told you, there are two Dennis Onyangos. The one on the field and off, off the field. When I'm on the field, I focus on what I'm doing. Even if I have problems. When, when my late dad was sick, I knew he was sick. But I cannot carry that to, to the game because it's going to affect my game. And when, when the game is affected, I don't get money. Yeah. I play for bonuses. I play for, for, for more salary increase and all that. So if I don't do that, I'm not going to get the money to help them or help him through his, 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 his sickness. And when I don't perform, it's affecting him as well because he watches me on TV and he's going to be worried and he's, he's going to get more sick. So when my kids are sick, my wife must do her job to look after the kids when I'm not there. But when I get time, I must also help. So it's not a one-way traffic. It must be both ways. Mm. I cook sometimes when it's necessary, when, when I have time and do you cook? I cook anything, everything. Looks like you burn water. No, and <laughs> amazing. And when they go to, let's say, to a play date, because they go to kids' play date mm -hmm. and they go, when they come back, they find me with something. They must have <laughs> something to eat. Okay, sometimes I order takeaway <laughs> because they also love it. <laughs> but when I can cook, I cook. Rice beef or, or chicken because it's easy yeah, yeah. i mean we we even women did not were not born in the kitchen they learned these things and not all of them even know how to cook and it's okay yeah so hey a woman who doesn't know how to cook shame i'm not yeah. saying it's a shame but <laughs> eh. you, said <laughs> <laughs> you said it's a shame when at my mother who is who is who is um who is like you i'm, I'm talking about the team like your closest, you can see that. Yes, my captain. I see most teachers. My captain. Your captain. He's, uh, mm -hmm. because I told you life is all about learning from someone else. I might learn something new from you, from him, and I combine it and it moves me forward and it helps me in the future. He's one guy who, when he's on the pitch also, is, is a monster, is, is, is a beast. Yeah. We even fight. I tell him, big words and he tells me whatever he wants but after the game we hug and move on and we laugh so i look up to him he grew up in the village he's a village boy i am a town boy but i grew up in the in the 
in the ghetto, slums and all that. So when I look at his life and what he has done, I look at my life and what I've achieved so far, I get to combine it and see a humble guy who cherishes family because he grew up with his mom and uh, he, he knows the struggles of women when you're growing up with a child and you're a woman and all the hassles, so he loves his mom. That's what I do also. I, I love my mom, I love my dad, I loved him. He was not around too much, but he was away because he was struggling for us to have a better life. So I give them first priority when I'm uh, available and my family at the same time and my brothers and my sisters because we grew up in the same struggle. So he's, he's the same. He's the same. They even say we are twins or brothers and all that, but he's very, very close to me. He's the stubbornness of the <laughs> Kennedy Mwine. Followed by me. Now, <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> Kubanga, they asked, I told you, Bambuza, whose father are you? <laughs> because sometimes the things I do are out of this world. I mean, I joke with everyone, I say what I want, but when it's time to work, it's time to work, and we, know, we all know that. But uh, when, when it's time to joke, we sit, because in the bus, we sit at the back of the bus. You look like a bus <laughs> You look like a bus Because at the front, it's the coaches. As you come towards the end, it's the youngsters. So we need to see the whole view from the back. Like the class monitors. Yeah. <laughs> we talk about everything. We joke about everything. So, and that's where the noise is at the back. The noise is at the back and, yeah. and I, I told you. the older guys sit at the back. Personality that made you fall in love with sports while growing up. Sadiq <laughs> Wasa. Best moment in your career so far? Playing at the Club World Cup in Japan. Vice President of Uganda. Second. It's football team in Uganda. Sports Club Villa. It has to be. <laughs> moment in your career so far? Uh, clearing off that ball at the, at the AFCON. The AFCON. Uh -huh. Best local song? Banyabo by Remo. Oh, ah, that's a shocker. Best local artist? Eddie Kenzo. Last song you danced to? It was a Nigerian song called Joe. Yesterday. An item in your house you can't live without? PlayStation. <laughs> Would you do... <laughs> <laughs> Would you do Zwane's hairstyle? Well, I would, but... Eh, hey, Nvidia Zain, the Zikura. Bampita, Chiwarat. And eh, Sichiri Nakari, Bagamba, eh. I love it. Bampita, Chiwarat. Come on, Sarako, Sarako. I don't like growing. Sidi naka bold, but na irakubanza salako. Neku national team bampita chwara ata, so it's okay. Best meal? Kaunga neve nyanja. That's where I come from. I come from the east. How long do you take in a shower? It depends. On what? Whether it's a bathtub or a shower. 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 Hmm. That you can turn. I mean, I'm not looking to become yellow. All I do is scrub myself, water myself, and I'm out. Biggest <laughs> meal you can make? Sure. Uh -huh. Breakfast, Yamaji, Amasike. Kubanga, it's all you do is that and that, and you are. It to be that or spaghetti. Spaghetti, Simagala and Yokubanga, I pick up weight easily. So, spaghetti. What's your love language? Hmm? <laughs> eh, English. When this is pretty much for your wife, and I know she's going to watch and be like, "Yes." Uh, how do you love her? What, what do you? What are some of those things you do? You know, for her, for the love bit of it. Those mm -hmm. things that are not normal, normal things, you know. Give her presents because they last longer in her memory. Because I'm never around, so I can't say I will, I will hug her, I'll carry her, no. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very shy guy. And there's things that I, I do or I can't do with my kids are there because they, they also look away and so a present makes her very happy.
coolest Ugandan footballer you have played alongside? Ibrahim Sekaja. First thing did you do when you wake up? Brushing. <laughs> Hardest opponent you have faced so far? Mo Salah. Kajo or John Teoya? Kajo. If it wasn't football, which other sport would you be professional at? Basketball. Yeah, I loved basketball when I was growing up at Sharing Youth Center in Zambia. Messi or Ronaldo? Ronaldo. Most stubborn player in your team? Dennis Onyango. <laughs> <laughs> Most quiet one? Uh, it should be Rivaldo Cotier. Mm. Most fashionable? Most fashionable. It should be uh, Lebohang, my boy. Biggest late comer? Tiani Mabunda. He can't because he knows he's always late. <laughs> He comes late, he comes and greets everyone when what's, everyone has... What's, what's his name? There is, a, there is this poet of yours who he's always talking with. Shabali, eh? Shaluli, Shaluli. <laughs> Peter <laughs> Shaluli. He looks like a... Very <laughs> quiet. Okay. Oh, yes. I will tell you about that boy. He's very quiet but stubborn. He's, 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 he, loves, he loves things but he loves to reserve things. He wants to interact but he reserves himself. So he, he doesn't give in. He but gives half. He finally gives in. He's stubborn. He is very stubborn. This celebration is the crazy. You see? <laughs> you see? You, when you see him tucking in and he's <laughs> very <laughs> humble, <laughs> but a very, very humble guy. What of Zwane? Zwane is stubborn, but he's, he's shy. He's shy. He loves his space. He's, he's, he's a guy, he's a very nice guy, but he reserves himself because. Uh, is uh, that his character? This is the final question for this interview. Akasana ngaka kuwa. Na kasana ngaka gara kuchovola. Akasana. Na pa na kasana ngaka gara kuwanga. I'm going back in the cold, so I'm mm -hmm. absorbing the heat. Mm -hmm. fi fi final, final question. In in South Africa right now, when you wake up, you're not talking about the uh, day when you have a game day. Mm. Every day. What time do you wake up? How does the day go? I wake up at 10. Mm -hmm. When I don't have even training, yeah. I wake up at 10. B I wake up at 10 because I sleep late. I'm not used to sleeping early. When I sleep early, then I'm tired. And I don't sleep. I don't, when I'm tired, I don't go to the bed. I sleep on the couch. Pakistan. So the whole night? The entire night. When the kids are going to school. <laughs> yes, kubanga kati. When I turn bulande ninya madalang endre into the bedroom, otlo tuge na kunzi guamu. So never kawo, and they cover me with the blanket. Paka kumacha, and they know. The banzo kusanti. Come, what what? You 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 are a late sleeper. Woke like. What are movies? Woke like. Amazing, I don't watch movies. I watch I watch either football or National Geographic or channel. Weird, eh? Yeah. I only watch movies when we travel, like on the flight, because I get tired quick of the flight. It's four hours, I feel like, yo, oh, I need to cut it short to three or two. I watch a movie, it kills the time. I watch football. Or I play PlayStation online because online you play with people who are in Europe or would they see where we move. Time difference. I play with my teammates till late. I know my wife doesn't like it when I play online because now I, I leave I them there. there. No man who likes play. Okay, they're there, but they're few. PlayStation. <coughs> but it's PlayStation. Okay, but if I don't play PlayStation, then I must go out to my friends. And that, they don't love that. You know, you, you see? I have a friend of mine who. He will hate you all his life. Because it's fun. It's fun. Okay, that's the new... As, as women, you love your phones. That's how we love our PlayStation. You, you guys also love your phones. Yeah, but... I might stay the whole day with this phone and do not answer to any WhatsApp or any call. But I see... But I can't stay the whole day without playing.
I even play with my kids. 